Greetings and welcome back. This is N1IR, and this is the twelfth section. Your computer goes ham digital. Let's begin. All right, so we're on the twelfth section here. Your computer goes ham digital. Okay, international Morse code is the code used when sending CW and the amateur bands. So when you're in the CW mode, uh, you're transmitting Morse code. The following devices can be used to transmit CW in the amateur band. You can use a straight key. You can use an electronic keyer. You can use a computer keyboard. And all these are correct. Now the interesting thing is with CW, it is Morse code and it can be recognized with a computer. And it's one of the one of the only modes that you can either be a human or a computer and you can interchange vice versa. So a human can read a computer, a computer can read a human. Uh, the other modes, the other digital modes, can't do that. It's, a, it's strictly computer to computer on the other modes. These are the one, one of the um, the rarities on uh, this one. So it's uh, it's a very interesting mode to operate on. And uh, CW, it, of course, is no longer required uh, for your amateur uh, test. So uh, years ago, you used to have to uh, pass so many words per minute uh, in order to get licensed, and that's not the fact anymore. Which is um, I think is a good thing. It's actually um, surged uh, in how many people actually use CW. Um, initially it was thought that uh, CW would die uh, because the, the code uh, requirement was gone. But that is, uh, we found out that's not the case. Actually CW is becoming um, uh, very popular. Um, it's becoming more and more popular every day. And um, you know, I'm I'm a no-code uh, extra, so I didn't have to pass the code for my extra. And I'm, I'm getting interested in CW and, and transmitting uh, Morse code and practicing myself. So it's a very, very interesting mode. And it's one of the modes that you can get through no matter what. Um, so one of the followings are examples of digital communication. Well, you got Packet, PSK31, MFSK. All these choices are correct. Uh, so in another video, I'm going to shoot uh, digital modes and what they sound like. Uh, Packet has a certain sound to it, PSK has a certain sound to it, and MFSK has a certain sound to it. Um, Packet is uh, a, a pretty popular one in two meters, um, two meter packet net networks. Uh, PSK31 is really popular in the HF band, and uh, you could fit uh, multiple PSK signals into where a voice channel would fit. So. Um, it's very compressed, uh, which is which is really nice. You, you, when, when we communicate, we want to try to use the least amount of bandwidth as we can, um, and that mode is really really nice for that. And MFS MFSK. So all these choices are correct. All right. So here's a packet radio station, and this is your traditional. I'm going to quote that air quote that traditional packet radio station. Uh, I'm going to get into the other ways you can hook things up in a minute. But basically you have a computer or dumb terminal on the left. Uh, you have a transmit receiving ground. This is usually serial, RS-232, uh, to a TNC. Uh, TNC stands for Terminal Node Controller. And that interfaces to the radio. you got the push to talk, mic audio, ground and speaker audio. And uh, so serial connection and then you have your radio connection. Um, now this is really isn't the case. The, we can go without the TNC now. Um, whoops, went a little bit too f far on that one. So, excuse me for a second. Let me pull that back up again. All right. So uh, here is some uh, examples of some TNCs. And uh, here is a radio that has a TNC built in. This is FM dual band over TNC. Uh, now, uh, the TNC, the terminal load controller, would connect between a transceiver and computer and a packet radio station. So um, nowadays, this isn't the case. We don't really need a TNC anymore. You can go straight into your audio card. There's some software out there that, that, that can encode and decode a uh, packet uh, with your sound card. And your PC can control the radio. So. Um, there are TNC-less uh, setups that you can use with your computer. But traditionally, you would have an external TNC in there. 
Uh, when conducting digital communication using a computer sound card provides audio to the microphone input and converts to receive audio to digital form. So that's what I was just going over. So um, the uh, computer horsepower has increased over the years and uh, the TNC was basically used when it was the old 8-bit and 16-bit systems. Uh, now we have uh, very powerful systems now uh, with uh, very high resolution audio cards so we can actually uh, decode and encode uh, direct from the sound card now which we weren't able to do years ago. We used to use, have to use a bell modem uh, back way way back in the day. Um, the following may be included in packet transmissions. A checksum which permits error detection. A header which contains the call sign of the station in which the information is being sent. It automatically repeats request in case of error. All these choices are correct. So uh, if it doesn't receive the whole entire packet, it'll just keep trying over and over and over again until it, uh, it gets through. An ARQ transmission system is a digital scheme where the receiving station detects an error and sends a request to the sending stations to retransmit the information again. And some of you computer guys out there, uh, request to send. You'll, you'll see that a lot in, um, in modems. If data signal propagates over multiple paths, the error rate is likely to increase. So this is ideally when you're operating on HF and you might have multiple paths. Um, you, you'll have some errors. It's like data collision on networks on your, um, on your PC network. Uh, kind of the same idea. Uh, an application of APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System, is that it provides real-time tactical digital communication in conjunction with a map showing the locations of the station. So you can interface it with um, uh, certain GPSs and they can tell you who is in the area, what frequency there are, and you can actually text back and forth uh, all using the APRS system. You can also use APRS on your smartphone. There's uh, applications on your smartphone that you can use uh, APRS, or you can use APRS over Bluetooth to your radio with your smartphone. So there's, there's a lot of ways to get into APRS. Um, that way, the, if you use the, the radio, you're not using the cellular backbone, you're using amateur radio backbone. But uh, the neat thing is you can text, you can get data, uh, you can find out where people are, and uh, and that was APRS. The term APRS means Automatic Packet Reporting System. And uh, we came up with this system uh, before uh, some of the uh, carriers, some of the uh, letter carriers have come up with a similar system like UPS and FedEx where um, it tracks the, the vehicles. Um, and we were the first to pioneer this and uh, we see it now uh, commercially available uh, for police cruisers, uh, UPS, FedEx any type of um, asset that you need tracking. Um, so that's the uh, private sector use of it. So uh, it's been around for a long time and we're, we're the ones that uh, pioneered the system. A GPS, a global positioning system receiver, provides data